Hey, this is Don, another blue collar study getting into some more of Psalms, Psalms chapter four. Um, this will probably be a short one. Um, I don't know if you saw, uh, you know, some of you that have been in the ministry of God's using you, uh, you're going to get some opposition. Uh, it's just the way it's going to be. Yesterday, I was on the route and there's a whole bunch of stuff going wrong but in the midst of everything going wrong I had to go up after I'd already gotten home I had to go up and do a favor for my boss grab the garbage truck grab a container and I was bringing it back down to the yard where we park and out of nowhere uh, a meth head who had a suspended license in a junk car wearing no shirt no shoes he came up on my right hand side and literally did a 90 degree cut in front of my garbage truck uh, and I garbaged, I mean, I, I nerfed him completely over to the three lanes over. Um, I mean, he really felt like trash after that, man. I mean, he was down in the dumps, let me tell you. Um, but, uh, it made no sense whatsoever. And of course, then the ambulance showed up and the fire truck and the cops and, um, it just was not what I needed yesterday. Um, uh, and it, it made no sense. It made no logical sense. Now, that's an attack. But because I know uh, many of you pray for me, pray for me and my wife, um, the Lord stepped in and their witnesses showed up miraculously. I want to emphasize that word miraculously. Witnesses showed up, said, hey, I saw what happened. And the cop that showed up was really excellent. And he took it upon himself to go across the street and check out a couple guys that were way over on the other side of the street. And they said, yeah, we work at uh, we work at this dealership here and we have a video camera inside. And I'm pretty sure we, uh, we have video of what happened. The cop went inside. He saw they had video that corroborated my story, saw that I was the innocent party. And he took video off of their video and... Uh, got me out of the mess. Um, all the evidence is in my favor now. And that's only due to God stepping in. Now, I was allowed to be attacked of the devil, but God stepped in and protected me. Um, some of you folks, uh, you've been very generous and, you know, hey, do you, would you like me to send you a check? That kind of thing. And a lot of times I'll just say, hey, will you fill the check out to Robert Militello? And I'll get it to him because uh, I know I know his situation. And and even though I, I have a situation like I've got some teeth that need to be worked on and some other things. Um, oh, yeah, I could use the money. But here's the thing. Uh, that's not what I'm here for. That's not what I so I'll usually I'll just turn it down. That's not what I'm about. I want your prayers. <laughs> that's what I want. I want I want the prayers. Um, yeah, I want to sell you these. uh uh, Revelation 19, Jesus Christ, air cavalry, death from above stuff, because that's an idea. I think that's a, a proper doctrine, and it's um, I think it's something that needs to get out there, and people need to see that. Christians need to see that, and there's a whole sermon on that, but I'm not making any money off of that. Uh, my thing is, is I want prayer. I want people praying for me, and some of you out there, you get your prayers answered, You've got a connection that I do not have. Uh, you have the ability to reach the Lord like I do not have. And that's what I covet. Um, I've had all kinds of heavy stuff going on since we started this YouTube channel. And it's only miracles have really taken place. And it's only been because of the prayers of people that are the subscribers on this channel that have gotten us through these really bad situations. Um, right now I'm dealing with this crazy neighbor, man. I mean, this dude is just nuts. And he'll text us with these um, weird texts that don't make any sense, you know, accusing us of stuff and blah, 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 blah. Big story short. Anyways, if you'd uh, uh, pray that God would deal with this crazy neighbor of mine, he's always noisy. He's always making lots of noise. He just does crazy stuff, and then his. It, if we know he's outside, we'll usually avoid going outside, just so that we don't have to deal with him. You know, it's that kind of neighbor. 
Um, if you'd pray about that situation, I'd appreciate it. But anyways, thanks for the prayer. So um, that's that's really what I want to say is thank you for praying. Uh, my back is is doing a little bit better, but it's still kind of tweaky. If you'd remember to pray for my back, I'd appreciate it. Um, but let's get into the lesson here. Um, Psalms chapter 4. Psalms chapter 4. Um, and on that post that I did today, I did that post uh, on... You know, supposedly, if you're if you have a uh, a YouTube channel or something like that on the internet, and you call it a ministry, then you're just a punk and you're an idiot and you're a moron and you're not real and you're la you know you're you're lazy and you're not the real deal. Look, for thousands of years, uh, men have been able to put themselves into chief positions by their own power and by their own politicking. And they wiggle and weasel their way into important positions so that they can be the voice, so that they can um, uh, influence people or what, whatever, right? And they never see God coming along like he did in the, uh, you know, they had the chief seats in the synagogues. They had the, the, the Jews who were in the temple. They had position. And when Jesus Christ showed up, uh, he pulled the rug out from underneath their feet and by the time 70 AD took place, God completely dismantled their ability to be, uh, you know, in chief positions within a synagogue and the chief seats and the, their whole religion was burnt to the ground. There was no more temple. There was no more of any of it. The, even the priests were hidden, um, scattered. And God's been doing the same thing. Uh, history repeats. We've been going through the same thing now. Um, obviously, we're not the synagogues and things like that. We don't have a temple. But we have churches and all the church politics that have been taking place. And men uh, doing what they can with men and getting this the right certificates and the right, you know, oh, will you put your hands on me and we'll call it an ordination and... You know, and I'll I'll do you know I'll do what you say, and if you'll let give me uh, your graces and all, all that sort of stuff, and it's politics. Um, it's just politics, and then they wind up in um, in a position of power, and it and God, I believe be, between the COVID thing, uh, between the COVID thing and just things like YouTube. He's pulled the rug out from underneath a lot of these guys to where um, it's like, no, you're, you're not going to be the only guy. You're not going to be the only game in town. And, and the plow boy, the garbage man, the carpenter, the whoever, they're going to have an equal voice with you. And we're not going to have this uh, New Testament local church priesthood going on any longer. Um, I've seen that take place and that gets into right into chapter four, verse one, hear me when I call, hear me when I call, O God, my righteousness, thou hast enlarged me. See, you can, you hear the guy next door. He's always doing stuff like that. He'll get out the leaf blower, which is supposed to blow leaves, but he doesn't blow leaves. He'll blow dirt. Weird. And he just walks around for an hour blowing, blowing dirt, blowing dust, just for weird. The guy's got a spiritual um, problem. And don't you find it curious that just as we're getting into this Psalms lesson here, he starts up for no reason? Yeah. Pray for that guy, if you know what I mean. Um, it says in uh, Psalms 4.1, Thou hast enlarged me. Thou hast enlarged me. Hmm. So if God enlarges you or puts you into the ministry, then the people who have the right book and are also plugged into God, they will recognize that God's behind you as well. Now, the wrong people won't recognize it, obviously. The world will hate you. But uh, the right people will recognize that God is behind you and that God has enlarged you and God is using you if it is, in fact, 
God who has enlarged you. Um, if you politic and set yourself up and put yourself into the ministry, ugh, you don't want to do that. I've, I've seen that happen. Um, I, I, I saw that happen in Ridgefield, Washington. I saw that happen in Portland, Oregon off of Powell. Um, I've seen men force and cram and politic and use a you know a, a crowbar to just force themselves into the ministry and try and convince everyone that you know God called me to do this God called you know they're always trying to out loud I think trying to convince themselves by trying to convince you that God called them and it just, it just is a mess it never works out it's a there'll be 20 or 30 years into it and it's just a, a continual disaster because God refuses to bless the thing. It's it's so it just sits there kind of dead. Um, you ever seen these the Christian rock bands? Um, I used to be into to Christian rock music and stuff uh, way back. I was trying to f trying to find something and uh, before I had my King James and all that. And uh, it's just no matter how much you wanted it to be used by God. It just didn't. It just was kind of dead. You know what I mean? You ever listen to that stuff? Um, I mean, at least the secular stuff, uh, it does have a spirit behind it. It is used of somebody. So it, it does have something there. But the Christian rock music, it's like it's not used by anybody. So it's just sort of dead and dehydrated and you know, just sort of, you know. And, and that's what some of these ministries are like. Um, God just refuses to use them. And they're just, it's a man trying to do everything within his fleshy power and through his politics, trying to set himself up in the ministry uh, so that people will take him serious. God won't take him serious, but he, they want men to take them seriously. And it's, it's a disaster. Uh, I've also seen, here's another situation, I've seen where God gave a man an opportunity to prove that he was worthy of the ministry um, and he was being used for a trial period. I've seen that. Uh, and there was like a trial period that he was in where God's like, okay, uh, let's see how you do here. Um, and it was like God was working and God was going to, you know, God was making things happen. And you could feel the spirit of God working. And then the guy got off on the left field, started getting money based started getting greedy of filthy lucre, uh, started making other just bad spiritual decisions, allowing the devil to run things. Um, not to get into it, but just, just started making some really bad decisions that crossed some heavy lines that uh, shouldn't have been crossed. All of a spiritual, all of that really had a spiritual nature behind it and God dumped him. It was like, okay, you know, I, I tried to give you a, a trial period to see if, isn't that what they do in the military? If you want to join the SEALs or you want to join the Rangers or the Marines or, you know, or, you know, some, some real group, you know, like, you know, if you're a Bible believing preacher, you're a part of the, the, the real group. And you have to go through buds. You have to make it through buds, or you have to make it through Hell Week, or you have to make it through uh, Ranger training, or whatever it is. You have to first go through, you know, boot camp, then AIT, and then you got to go through, uh, you know, uh, Ranger training and and uh, um, airborne training and all the rest of it. Then after the trial period, now you can put you have a right to put the uh, the patch on your uniform and you're now considered a ranger or a marine or a, 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 a seal or whatever, right? There's always a trial period. And I've seen where certain men went through that trial period and they just didn't make it. Sorry, you know, you didn't make BUDS training. You, you know, go join the regular Navy or whatever, but you, you're not making it into the special group. Sorry, see you later. But, 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 sorry. Well, don't I get another chance? No, you don't. This was your one opportunity. And so they go on still pretending. And you've seen this in the world with stolen valor, 
where they go on pretending that they are a war hero or pretending that they're they were a marine or pretending that they were a seal or whatever and then you look into their past and you find out well no they really weren't it's stolen valor well there's kind of the same thing going on with these guys that god dumped when god wanted to use them and now they're pretending to be used by god and pretending to be god's ministry and god's using us when he isn't anymore uh that's going on in hillsboro oregon right now uh, there's places in there's churches in washington there's a church in california and they all claim to be bible believers they all claim to be you know the ruckman da 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 da, da and their candlestick has been blown out they crossed lines that they shouldn't have crossed they did things they shouldn't have done and they're they just dis disqualified by god done um thou hast enlarged me the bible says thou hast enlarged me if god enlarges you if god puts you into the ministry um god will be the one that puts you into the ministry if god doesn't put you into the ministry uh it's just going to be a disaster um if god wants to use you and you're willing god will use you no matter what I can think of another example. Here's a positive example. Uh, Robert Militello. Robert Militello, um, God wanted to use Robert Militello. And uh, Robert Militello was willing to be used. So God started opening doors. He started bringing people along that, you know, was, hey, we want you to come over and preach for us. We want you to be our pastor. We want you to set up a church. People fighting over him. Uh, there was like one church in Texas that wanted him and they were willing to give him all kinds of money and a parsonage and all the rest of it and then there was a, a little group in New York that needed him and Robert Militello having the spiritual character that he has he sought God's mind and God's heart and even though this place in Texas wanted to wine and dine him as it were and give him all kinds of money and, and all the rest of it uh, Robert Militello saw that that's not where he belonged. He belonged in this little, um, you know, hole in the wall, as it were, for, for a while. I don't know how big it got. Maybe an apartment size or something in uh, New York. He saw that God, that's where God wanted him. That's where God wanted to use him. So that's where Robert Militello went. He followed God's leading instead of following the money and following the big church and following all the rest of it and then god has kept god kept using him and god has opened doors left and right for him and uh if jesus christ opens the door no man can shut it and jesus christ has opened the door for robert militello and no man can shut it although i know some men who would like to shut the door on robert militello and they're not going to be able to do it uh, unless they can get jesus Christ's permission <laughs> and they're not that door is going to stay open because God wants to use Robert Militello. God wants to enlarge Robert Militello, if you will. And he has. Uh, and doors have been opening left and right for him. And he didn't go through, as far as I know, I've talked to him for many hours. I've, uh, I, I believe I know him fairly well. And I don't, I don't ever remember him going through some initiation or accreditation or ordination you know, this kind of thing of man. Uh, God simply called him to study his Bible, taught him his Bible, and he studied his Bible like I did. And he didn't go through some um, machine of man in order to be officially recognized as Pastor Robert Militello, Dr. Robert Militello, whatever. Uh, he just, God put, God put him into the ministry. And, and God has been using him. Um, and that's just the way that it is. And if you're used of God, uh, that's just going to be the way that it is. Now, look at... Um, let's let's read this over again. Uh, hear, uh, hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress... Uh, when I was in distress, have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Um, when I was in distress, God is the only one that can fix your issues. Amen. 
If God fixes the problem, it gets fixed. Like me up there uh, with a smashed car uh, hitting my garbage truck. That was a very bad situation. Could have really meant a, a really a, a detrimental situation for my license and lawsuits and all kinds of stuff. But God fixed it, like I told you. If God doesn't fix it, it stays broken, right? Notice that word distress there, distress. What's the modern word that you see within that word distress? You see stress, don't you? Stress, S-T-R-E-S-S, -E -S -S. it's right in there. That's 2022, is it not? Stress, stress, yeah. Uh, 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3, Psalms, the book that uh, leads to the entire book as a root system that goes to the entire Bible from Psalms. 2 Timothy 3, let me start reading. Now I'm going to start reading about 2022, all right? This know also that in the last days, right, Laodicea? You know, you're studying in Revelation. You know that the rebel that you know that Laodicea is the last church period before Jesus Christ returns, and you would know that that's where we're at, right? You talk about the last days. Well, this know also that in the last days perilous, perilous times shall come. Can you say Amen to that? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. I think we just talked about that a little. Covetous, I think we just talked about that a little. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, uh, without natural affection. Boy, we've been dealing with that last few up last few uploads, that unnatural affection. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. They despise us, don't they? Um that original upload was put on Facebook by the by the original group uh, in England, and it was taken down immediately. And when we put it up on YouTube, it got attacked immediately. Why? Because they're fierce, and because they're false accusers, and because they're despisers of those that are good. That really describes America, doesn't it? Despisers of those that are good. You know, Donald Trump had his problems, but as a president, he was good. He really was. Was he perfect? No. But if you compare him with uh, Biden or Obama or Hillary or uh, the Clintons or he or, or the Bushes, he was good. He was a good man. So people despised him. We're in the last days and they're despisers of those that are good. If you're a good man, um, you're going to be canceled. You're going to be part of the cancel culture simply by saying something that is good. Um, you, if you say things that are evil, They'll actually promote you. But in the last days, despisers of those that are good. Verse 4, traitors. Boy, that even describes most of our presidents. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Watch this, verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Um, notice that having a form of godliness. Boy, are we seeing this more... In these last days, uh, even amongst the, the so-called Bible believers, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So they have a form, a form of godliness. They look and sound like gospel preachers, don't they? I mean, they really do. You look at them, they got the right shirt on, they got the right tie on, they got the right voice, they got the whiteboard with the chart, they, they, they've got the form, a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Um, Matthew 9, going through this root system, Matthew 9, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Matthew 9, verse 6, but that ye may know that the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, hath power on earth to forgive sins. Jesus Christ has power to forgive sins. He does that through the gospel, doesn't he? 
Look at uh, John, John chapter 1. They deny the power. Oh, no, we don't deny the power. Oh, yes, you do. By what you teach. John 1, 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them gave he what? Power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Notice that the belief is, is um, the belief is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's settled on receiving. It, it must, you must receive him. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So if you believed on his name, you received him. How do you receive him? The Bible tells you how to receive him. You believe and you call, Romans chapter 10, or 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The Bible tells you how to believe. The Bible tells you how to receive him. But as many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Um, look at uh, Romans 1, Romans chapter 1. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof by their teaching. Romans 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What is that, Paul? That's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That's the gospel. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. And you say, what's that belief? We just saw it. You have to receive it. Within the same book here, Romans, we're in Romans 1. I won't belabor this within the same book, within the same writing by the same author. You go to Romans chapter 10, and he tells you how to believe. He says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you don't just call. Don't just call. You need to believe, too. It's with the heart. You need to believe and call. Don't just believe. You need to believe and call. All right? Don't be a Bible pervert. Don't be a gospel pervert. You need to get the belief in there, and you need to get the calling in there. And it needs to be according to the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That's what you believe. How do you know? We've gone over this before. Romans chapter 10, verse 16 but they have not all obeyed the gospel within the context of that gospel. For Isaiah saith, do a cross-reference to Isaiah 53, which is the quote here. Romans chapter 10, verse 16, you're given by the Holy Spirit a cross-reference to Isaiah 53, where it calls this the gospel. And that's your 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That's a direct cross-reference by the Holy Spirit to Romans chapter 10. But in these last days, we've been reading 2 Timothy chapter 3. We have these so-called Bible believers within the Bible-believing camp of the Baptists. Man, I never saw this before. I got in on this in 1993, got into it really heavy in 1994, went through all of Dr. Rockman's commentaries and was uh, studying um, uh, Steve, Steve Sturgeon and, um, you know, Gail Ripplinger and Sam Gipp and just go just tearing through my Bible and making notes all day Saturday while everybody else was out at a picnic or a party or whatever. My whole day, man, I was just going through it. And I was, and I studied to show myself approved unto God. Um, and, you just you didn't see certain things amongst the Bible believing Baptists with the King James Bible. There's just you had some flakiness. You always have. There's always a little bit of apostasy 
there's always a few goofs. But for the most part, there was just certain things that you just never saw. There were certain things that were kosher and certain things that just were accepted as, no, this isn't kosher. This is not okay. And you'd be embarrassed if you got caught teaching or preaching some, some of the stuff that just, just no, that, that isn't right, man. You are not approved unto God. And it just never went on. And then we got up into, I don't know where it began, uh, 20 teens, somewhere in there. We started seeing some of these flakes coming through the woodwork. And they started getting into these weird doctrines of a three and a half year tribulation and uh, never heard of before, uh, other than maybe off in a sidecar somewhere where it's like, oh, yeah, well, you can maybe see this in, you know, page 283 or whatever of Larkin's book when they were trying to figure out the Bible. And, you know, nobody really nobody really gives that any heed. You know, it's just yeah, it's there, whatever. You, they ignored it. Um, you know, it just it was ignored. And now all of a sudden it's boom. It is all over the place. It's like a virus that's taken over the Bible-believing uh, Baptist. Um, and there's all this other weird stuff coming in. And salvation itself, salvation itself and the gospel itself just being perverted. And how to get saved itself. We can't even get past how to get saved. That's being perverted by, I, I expect Joel Olstein to pervert it. I expect that. I expect Billy Graham to pervert it. I expect... Um, all the all the rest of these weirdos, I expect them to pervert uh, how to be saved. I just expect that. Oh, you got to speak in tongues, or you got you know, whatever you got to get sprinkled or whatever. I expect that. But King James Bible believing, uh, Rockmanite, yada yada, uh, us, and hundreds of thousands of people following it and defending it. Wow, man! You talk about having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof within the context of the gospel and how to get saved. They look like gospel preachers, they sound like gospel preachers, and they have all of the accreditations of, uh, you know, oh, here's my slip, here's my paper. I went through I went through PBI, you know, I got ordain, ordained or whatever. Uh, I'm good. No, no, no. You have a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. You're a, you're you're a Bible pervert, uh, and Second Timothy three five says, "From such turn away." You're to turn away from those. From such turn away. If you're a Bible believer, you're to turn away from those individuals. Well, he has some other stuff. They deny the very power thereof of salvation. You're to turn away from them, even if you like some of the other stuff. Um. And it also says in uh, 2 Timothy, let me go back here, 2 Timothy, going back to 2 Timothy 3, 2 Timothy um, 3, 6. For of this sort, for of this sort, are they which creep into houses. How are they able to do that? They do it through YouTube. They do it through YouTube. Uh, YouTube has some good stuff. It's got some bad stuff, just like anything. For this sort are they which creep into houses through their iPhone, through their computer, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. This is the, they'll, you'll find that there'll be a lot of silly, goofy women that will follow these individuals. Verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They never come to the knowledge of the truth. They're always learning. Oh, look at this chart. Look at that chart. Oh, look what he went over today. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't that just marvelous? I'll have to share this with Mildred. And they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They never even find out how to, how to get saved. They never even figure out the basics of how to get saved. They're both involved in a false gospel with a false preacher with a false audience. It's a mess. And that's the day and age we're in. And uh, it's all part of that stress. Why? The question comes up specifically, why? 
why are we living in a stress-filled country? And have you noticed that it just recently, I mean, if you look back in the 90s, yeah, there was some stress, stress with the Clintons, and there was some of the, you know, major environmental stuff getting pushed, and the liberals, and the getting stronger, and the, the homosexuality getting stronger. It was there, but it wasn't anything like what we've seen in recent years. Um, and I'm not just talking about the USA. Hey, if you live in Ireland, you're saying amen. If you live in Canada, you're saying amen. If you live in Scotland, you're saying amen. If you live in Australia, you're saying amen. Stress, man. Crappy days. If you live in the Ukraine or Russia, you're saying amen. Why is it that we're all living in a country that's just filled with stress and it's just, uh, it's hard to deal with every day? Let's go back to Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, the Bible has the answers. The Bible has the answers. Problem is, people aren't into the Bible. They're not getting the answers. Isaiah, let's, uh, let's start in Isaiah 59, and let's start in verse 1, and uh, let's just start reading here, all right? It's good to read the Bible, get some answers here. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, Okay, we're in stressful times. We're in uh, heavy times. We're in times that it seems like, well, what can we even do? Just throw your hands up. What, what can we do? That's good. Throw your hands up. You know what that is? That's a prayer posture. Throw your hands up to the Lord. The Lord's hand is not shortened. He still has the power he always did. That it cannot save, you as an individual can count on the Lord. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. You and me as individual Bible-believing Christians trying to do the right thing, the Lord will hear your prayers. Verse 2, but your iniquities, USA, Australia, Russia, Canada, Scotland, Ireland, uh, Ukraine, whatever, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. God bless America, my home. No, you better not be singing that anymore. God is not blessing America. And when you remove uh, in God we trust from the coins, you're simply being honest. Um, the UK used to have a lot of stuff about God being involved with them and, you know, God saved the queen and all this. Um, not anymore. Uh, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. He's no longer your God. And your sins, oh, there you go, nation, USA, Ireland, Canada, Australia, Ukraine, Russia. Your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. He will not hear. You can have thousands and thousands and millions of Christians saying, God, deliver this country from the mess that we're in, and God is not going to respond positively to that. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered uh, perverseness. None calleth for justice, for the most part, do they? How many people do you know, Christians included, Bible believers included, how many do you know who are really calling for justice? Nor any pleadeth for truth. How many do you know who are truly pleading for truth? And they're not just going to what they want to hear. They trust in vanity. Oh boy, yes they do. And speak lies. They conceive mischief and bringeth forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice's eggs and weave the spider's web. Gee, what's associated with spiders and cockatrices? I do believe it's Satan. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh, for, breaketh out into a viper. It's satanic. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Have you ever seen these uh, dream catchers all over the place? Dream catchers? It's not going to help you. Uh, their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Antifa, 
BLM, all these street thugs, their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace, uh, they know not. They just don't. That's the day and age that we're in, like my neighbor next door. If he's not making noise, he's not happy. Seriously. Um, I had a neighbor on the other side, which isn't so bad. At midnight, he was out grinding steel. He was working on something. He was working on his car or something. At midnight, he's out there with his grinder. And I had to get on him. Uh, I had uh, Luckily, I was able to text him. And I said, dude, it's midnight. You're waking us up and you're keeping us awake. Could you, you, do you mind? Oh, sorry, man. The way of peace they have not known. They don't get in their Bible and meditate. Uh, I was talking to someone on uh, the channel here where I'm like, uh, yeah, man, just, just put on some uh, classical music in the background, not too loud. Some real peaceful music like that. Maybe get uh, one of these YouTube channels on where it's nothing but a, you know, a river going by real quiet, you know, or, or uh, maybe a rain rainstorm or something in the background or that kind of thing. Um, or a crick, a little, you know, quiet crick in a mountain range somewhere going on and get out your King James Bible and start studying it and spend hours just meditating on the word. Maybe get yourself uh, a glass of iced tea, not too strong, just some nice iced tea sitting next to you and take a nice sip of that iced tea every once in a while and you feel your heartbeat just sort of slow down, your breathing slow down. You start feeling, you know, okay, I, boy, I feel like I'm on another plane here. I feel like maybe God is trying to talk with me here, trying to show me stuff through his word. I'm de-stressing. And they, but the way of peace, they just, they don't know. They'd rather be in their car shooting down the road, you know, back and forth, back and forth. You know, the, the chariots in there, you know, raging once it, one against another in the broadways like torches. Um they uh they have made them crooked paths it says uh whosoever therein shall not know peace these crooked paths you know the highway the byway the freeway these crooked paths you spend your whole day on maybe for you it's the web and instead of just going in and getting a, a study or listening to dr rockman or whatever you're spending way too much time uh on facebook and twitter or what have you uh, just debating with people and arguing with people and um, you're in that stuck web. You can get trapped in that thing and you need to know how to use that thing aright uh, and not and not let it take you captive. It can become a crooked path to where now you don't know peace anymore. Peace is departed from you. Verse 9, therefore is judgment far from us. Isn't that true? If you live in Australia... If you live in Ireland, if you live in the USA, if you live in Canada, if you live in Russia, wherever, judgment is far from us. There's just no judgment. Neither doth judgment or neither doth neither doth justice overtake us. There's no judgment, there's no justice. We wait for light, right? You listen to these stupid talk shows. You listen to, listen to all these arguments, and oh boy, we're everyone. You know these uh, these liberals are going to eventually turn around. They're going to see the light, and they're going to be red pilled. Amen. Red pilled, and they're going to turn around, and we're going to take the you know we're going to have a, a red wave, and uh, happy days are going to be here again, and the Democrats are going to get swamped, and and we're going to no 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 no. Therefore, is judgment far from us. Neither doth judge, neither doth, I can't even speak, neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, we're waiting year after year, and it just gets worse and worse. But behold, obscurity for brightness. You're waiting for brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope, look at that word, we grope for the wall like, a, like the blind. Wow. Isn't that what the country is like? Whatever country you're in, they're, they're groping. Oh, where's a, where's a podcast that's going to give me the truth? Where's a, where's a channel that's going to give me the truth? 
where's a TV channel or a radio show or where, where is this individual that's going to give me the truth? Oh, I want to buy this guy's book. You know what? The country has left God. Uh, you, whatever country you're in, they dump God, they dump the book, they dump the gospel, and they allow the perverts to take over. Amen. They allowed wickedness to take over. They started making God illegal. Oh, can't have prayer here. Can't have a Bible in here. Can't have preaching in here. No, you can't pass those out here. That's mixing church and state. So what happens? We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. Yeah, because you're blind now. We stumble at noonday. It's in the middle of the day, and you still can't see, as in the night. We are, uh, we are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears. Isn't that a good description? You're like, ah. See? You roar. You're like, oh, man, I can't believe. You turn on the computer, and it's the next thing. Oh, they just made this legal. Oh, these people just got away with this. Oh, you got to be. We roar like bears. See? See the Bible's language, how perfect it is? We mourn sore like doves. Ah, oh, right? I mean, I I should get uh, I should I should find some dove some dove sounds. Isn't that likened unto crying? Crying like doves? We mourn sore like doves when we see the things that are happening every day. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. It's not going to come, folks. Salvation is not going to come to your country. You're going to go down the toilet. For our transgressions, nationally, our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins, America, Australia, Canada, testify against us, Ukraine. For our transgressions are with us, and as, our, as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing, and lying against the Lord, all these false religions, these false Bible translations, these false denominations, they're lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, Mormonism, Mohammedism, liberalism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Pentecostalism, speaking oppression and revolt, Conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Do I need to expound on that? And judgment is turned away backward. Imagine that. And justice, justice, why do I have a problem with that? And justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street. And equity cannot enter. It can't. It cannot enter. We want equity. We want justice. We want judgment. It cannot, cannot enter. It's fallen in the street. Go look for it in the gutter if you like, but it won't even be there. Yea, truth faileth. Truth just faileth. Like I said, here just within the last few years, even the truth about the how to be saved amongst Bible-believing so-called uh, Rachmanites. Truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. You'll be canceled. You'll be canceled. You'll be fired. You'll be demoted. You'll be protested. He that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey, and the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. The Lord's not happy about it. The Lord's not happy about it. But, uh, you know, the Lord's also behind it. And the Lord, even though he's behind it, he's going to still judge your country. He'll still judge you because of the lack of judgment that's going on, even though he's behind it. You say, explain that. Read your Bible. Um. So, you know, Supreme Court, the White House, the Congress, the Senate, governors, mayors, judges, voters, uh, churches, seminaries, it's all gone to pot, um, literally and figuratively, 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 <laughs> it has, hasn't it? It's all gone to pot. 
both figuratively and spiritually and uh, in every other way. It's just, it's, um, tr truth has fallen in the streets. And don't expect it to recover. Um, it's just not. The Civil Rights Act came in in 1964 and uh, was an act that was 100% against the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. It was 100% against the Bible. Um, and it was, uh, well, not only just against the Bible's words, but it actually was connected with no prayer, no Bible being in the school and was actually an attack on God and an attack on the Bible and attack on Christians. And uh, now you have this, oh, you can't mix church and state. And the chief authority in the land seems to be the ACLU. The ACLU, the Antichrist League Union, uh, they have the power. And what they say is how things will go. Um, and people think, oh, well, we have this temporary uh, um, victory with Roe versus Wade. Well, first of all, um, that thing is going to be overturned. It's just a matter of time. But uh, like I said before in my other post, you think that's a victory? Uh, you know, show me, um, sh show me a victory with uh, them allowing you to preach where you couldn't preach before. Allowing kids to take a Bible into their schools, having uh, being allowed to have Christian um, uh, Christian clubs in their schools without coming under attack, being allowed to to pray around the flagpole at their school without the ACLU coming in, I'll call that a victory. Um, being allowed to pass out tracts in front of the post office, you know that type of thing, I'll call that a victory. Um, that the second birth, the second birth is where the victory is at, not the first birth. We were called to be about the second birth, not the first birth. That's not our charge. Our charge is not the first. You've been derailed. You've been putting your energy and your time and your and your fervor and your uh, everything else into the wrong basket, into the wrong fight. You're in the wrong battlefield. You're in the wrong fight. Uh, that is not our fight. The first birth is not our fight. That's not our battle. You're, you were told to be about the second birth. That is what you're to be about. And you see a victory there, that, that'll be something you can celebrate. 